Well hello and thank you for joining us at Wooler URC today. It's great to have you with us. I wonder, how's your week been? What's been going on? Perhaps you've got children or grandchildren that have gone back to school. Perhaps you yourself have gone back to work or maybe you're concerned that your job isn't actually going to exist for very much longer. Perhaps you've just been indoors isolating and it's been more of the same and quite frankly you're feeling a bit fed up with it all. Well, whatever you've been up to and however you're feeling, you're not alone and not on your own. If you need some help or just a chat, then do get in touch. We'd love to help you, and if we can't help, then maybe we can come alongside you and find someone who can. Our contact details are up on the screen. We'll put them up again at the end of the service. But do get in touch, whether that's by email, by phone, or on Facebook Messenger. Because as the restrictions continue, many people have been finding things tough this week. That's not a sign of weakness or anything like that. It's just a reflection that actually life can feel a bit rubbish for any of us from time to time. So, if you would like to, we're here to help. In the Bible, we read some wonderful words of reassurance. The Lord's kindness never fails. The Lord can always be trusted to show mercy each morning. Sometimes we need to be reminded of that. We need reassurance that God is faithful. So in a few moments, Becky is going to pray with us. But first, that promise that God is faithful is echoed in the words of our first hymn. So do join us as we worship. Shadow of turning. Wind. 
let us pray. Loving and faithful Father, we are grateful for all the mountains of blessings in our lives. Help us to seek ways to share them so that your love will shine ever brighter. Thank you for the wealth of normality that surrounds us. We see the abundance of creation and we cherish our communities in Wooler, Glendale and the welcoming example they set. May we take care of God-given resources with reverence and joy. Help us to be brave enough to appreciate all the challenges in life and the lessons that they always bring. Help us to be gracious when receiving help, humble when in need of it, and generous in returning it. We send our love to all those who have lost loved ones and face the traumas of lonely and protracted grief. We send our care to those in isolation and ongoing illness. We send our hope to those who feel lockdown will never end, especially those in great poverty, chronic illness, mental anguish and emotional turmoil. We send our admiration to all our key workers who have endured arduous conditions to protect and provide for us. Help us to continue to do all that we can to support them and work for the common good. We offer our proactive empathy to all those feeling injustice has blighted their lives. May we always do all we can to enable equality of opportunity when life is unfair. Help us to examine our thoughts, words and deeds so that we may enrich everyone we encounter as advocates for Christ. Help us to remember that when our hands are together and we are on our knees, we are at our most powerful. Thank you for all the examples of unity, resilience, hope and loving care. At this time of Pentecost, may we be invigorated with altruism, action and adoration. Amen. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. We're starting our Summer in the Psalms series, looking at how the Psalms can help us connect with God as we pray, praise and persevere through difficult times. Now, when I was an even younger man than I am now, and I was struggling to find my way around the Bible, my youth leader at the time gave me a great tip to help to find the Psalms. He said, if you open the Bible right in the middle, and then you'll find the book of Psalms. And I've never forgotten that because that's where it is, right in the centre of the Bible. Physically in the centre, but spiritually as well. You see, we so often call the Psalms the hymn book of the Bible. And there's masses in there, loads of different hymns and songs and poems. There are psalms of lament, of thanksgiving, of confidence, and of remembrance. There are wisdom psalms, kingship psalms, psalms for a coronation, psalms for a pilgrimage. And as you read through the psalms, they're full of all the ups and downs of life, the joys and the sorrows, the hope and the despair, love and bitterness, and most importantly, 
They're full of the human reaction to those feelings and how we take those reactions to God. They've been used by God's people from the earliest times in worship and in prayer. And yet, we don't use them so much today. In many church traditions like ours, they've fallen out of favour. Perhaps we rarely read them in church, or very often we just don't study them. At best, a few lines are used as an introduction or a filler between different parts of the service. However, Jesus knew them and used them. He would have grown up with them, lived them, would have known them by heart. In his teaching, he quotes the Psalms more than any other book of the Old Testament. So if they were so important to Jesus, why do we pay them such scant regard today? Well, I hope that in this series we might go some way to changing that balance. That together we might rediscover why they're so valuable and hear anew what they have to say to us. But above all, I hope that they will help us to deepen our relationship with God through prayer and praise as we persevere together through difficult times. So, let's get stuck in. Now, there are 150 Psalms in our Bibles, but don't worry, we're not going to plough through all 150. Instead, we're going to take one psalm each Sunday for the next few weeks and really become familiar with them. Let's see where they resonate with things that are going on in our lives. Different friends of our church are going to join us in our journey and help us to explore a different psalm each week. But we're going to start, as the song says, at the very beginning. So let's listen to the hymn book of the Bible as Audrey reads Psalm 1 for us. Psalm 1 Happy is the one who does not take the counsel of the wicked for a guide, or follow the path that sinners tread, or take his seat in the company of scoffers. His delight is in the law of the Lord, it is in his meditation day and night. He is like a tree, planted beside water channels. It yields its fruit in season, and its foliage never fades. So he too prospers in all he does. The wicked are not like this. Rather, they are like chaff driven by the wind. When judgment comes, therefore they will not stand firm, nor will sinners in the assembly of the righteous. The Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Amen. So the Psalms are tremendously varied, but they also have lots of things in common, many similarities that we'll become familiar with as we consider them over the next few weeks. And here are just three such things in this opening Psalm. First of all, psalms are really colourful, they're vibrant. The psalmist thinks in pictures. He conjures up beautiful images for us. And right from the get-go in that very first psalm, that's the case. The image he gives us is one of trees planted by streams of water. It's a vibrant and evocative picture. And I wonder what the picture in your mind is. It might be of a fast-flowing mountain stream carrying peat-stained water down from the Cheviot Hills through a rocky gorge with hawthorn or rowan trees standing alongside. Or perhaps you're thinking of a lowland river winding lazily through lush green meadows and willow trees reaching their branches down to caress the slow-moving surface of the water. However you imagine it, 
it's a wonderful scene of refreshment and rootedness. The trees that the psalmist invite us to imagine find their sustenance permanently from a source of nourishment. They don't take that nourishment occasionally when they feel like it, just dipping a root in the water every now and then. No, there's a sense of permanence in this image. Trees are there for the long haul. They don't get up and walk away. But they put down roots, permanent roots, in order to find their nourishment and their strength. Happy or blessed, the psalmist says, blessed are the ones who are like a tree planted by the water. They bear fruit in season. Their foliage doesn't fade or wither. The psalmist works in colour. He paints a glorious picture for us. And that brings us to the second feature that we often find in the Psalms, a contrast. No sooner do we have in mind the strong, thriving tree, then we're presented with something quite different, something that's an opposite, the chaff, a dried out waste product, lacking in any substance, blown away on the breeze. So on the one hand, we have a green, thriving, productive tree, and on the other, a dry, dusty, discarded drift of refuse. The contrast couldn't be clearer. It speaks for itself, and in doing so, it, pre it presents the third feature that commonly crops up in the Psalms, a challenge. And the challenge here is unspoken, but self-evident because of the colour and the contrast in this short little psalm. It's only six verses, this psalm, but look what a punch it packs. The challenge is this. Whose side are you on, the psalmist says? The wicked will not stand. And he goes on to say, the Lord watches over the righteous. There is a choice to be made here. There's no middle ground. There's no fudging the issue. Just a question to be answered. Which way will you go? But alongside and with the challenge comes an invitation and a promise. Blessed are those whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Now that's not a contract to enter some sort of state of bliss, but an invitation. An invitation to put down those strong roots and draw strength from God. Not a promise that you'll never face problems again. Not a get out of jail free card to escape life's difficulties, no. But a promise that rooting yourself in God's word will allow you to find the depth, the strength, the refreshment you need that will sustain you through those difficult times. Psalm 1 challenges us to choose what kind of life we'll have and that choice will determine how we respond to all the psalms that follow. Blessed are those whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen.
joining us today. Why not keep that psalm open beside you this week so that we can all take some time to reflect on it and picture ourselves like a tree planted beside channels of water with roots drawing up goodness from the clear flowing stream. Let's say a prayer together. Lord Jesus Christ, our wisdom Give us delight in your law, we pray, so that we may bear fruits of patience and peace in the kingdom of the righteous, for your name's sake. Amen. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, we'd love to hear from you this week, so our contact details are on the screen again. Please don't hesitate to get in touch, and we look forward to seeing you next week when Rachel Pullman from Holy Island will guide us through our next psalm. We're going to be played out with some music, a wonderful song uh, sung by Audrey Assad. So I hope you enjoy it as you put the kettle on. But in the meantime, have a good week and keep safe. And God bless. <laughs>